Ladies and gentlemen, I have done something that I am not sure if I regret doing it, but I've done it. And that is installing Windows on my Steam Deck. And I totally uninstalled SteamOS. So the only reason why I've done this was just to see if the actual full Windows experience on the deck is worth it or not. Because I've been watching some YouTube videos of a lot of people praising Windows on the Steam Deck. A lot of people saying that Windows on the Steam Deck is actually a really good experience, especially with some tools that we have available today, which I will talk about in this video. So this video is not like an in-depth tutorial of how to make the Steam Deck run incredibly well with the windows but more of me really telling you if it's worth it or not and then if you're interested I can then do a tutorial but this is more an experience video so I'm gonna first talk about games that run on Steam OS already just to see if games perform better or worse I'm also gonna talk about games that don't run on Steam OS like for example Fortnite games on Game Pass and also I wanted to see the docked experience how does it feel to dock the Steam Deck on a TV and see the TV experience is it good enough is it a constant headache I don't know we'll see so first I wanted to make a very important mention to Handheld Companion, which is this software here that I have on my Steam Deck. Now, this thing kind of emulates what SteamOS already does. You know the quick menu on SteamOS that where you can actually cap and limit the FPS? You can have the TDP limit there. You can kind of configure things up so you can have a customized experience on your games. Well, this is the same thing now with Handheld Companion on Windows. So when you hold this button here, you have this quick menu where you can actually change the TDP limit, the manual GPU clock control, you can change the hertz of the screen, the resolution, etc, etc. It works really well, however, it's still in development and it will have some crashes every now and then and it's a little bit buggy. So yeah, it's still in development, it's not the best experience in fact, Sometimes it works, sometimes it crashes, and it sucks. But it is what it is, you know, it's still in development. It's still a good tool to have if you have Windows in the deck. So, let's first talk about Steam games. Games that actually run on SteamOS. So I tried Dead Space. Dead Space is a phenomenal game that was released recently, and this is a phenomenal game because it runs pretty well on the Steam Deck. However, I do have to say that on SteamOS, I noticed way less stuttering on Dead Space Remake than on Windows. Maybe it has to do with the shader compilation thing. I'm not fully sure, but it is true that Dead Space on Windows, it is more stuttery. That's a fact. It's still playable, it's still good, but I just noticed that Dead Space Remake is slightly more stuttery on Windows than on SteamOS. Let's talk about Resident Evil Village. I wanted to try that game because that's a really well-optimized game. It's a game that works and runs really well on its own. It's re-engine. Re-engine is really optimized. So on the deck, it runs extremely well. We're talking about 60 FPS without any problems, without any hiccups, no stuttering or anything relevant of that matter. It's really good. And something that's really cool is that again, by using handheld companion here, I can actually limit the FPS. So for example, if I want to save some battery life on my Steam Deck, I'm on a long trip in a bus or in a train, I can limit the FPS to 30. So like that, my Steam Deck will run cooler and also so the battery life will last longer. So that's actually cool and it runs really well here on Windows. It's really cool to see something like the quick menu on SteamOS, but on Windows. It's really cool. I highly recommend this to anybody who installs Windows on the deck. So let's talk about games that don't run on SteamOS, games that just don't work at all. Fortnite, for example. So I tried Fortnite and Fortnite on its own was extremely stuttery. Uh, so I just realized that the game was running by default on DirectX 11. I don't know why, but changing from DirectX 11 to DirectX 12 and lowering down all the settings, I just wanted to keep textures and medium settings. It just made the game run extremely well, like flawless, like no stuttering at all. So DirectX 12 with all the settings down, it runs 60 smooth FPS. I barely noticed any any dips in the performance. It runs really well. But I also wanted to try some gyroscope on Fortnite, and that's a really cool thing that Handheld Companion has included, which is the actual gyroscope uh, simulator thing. So games on Steam are easy to configure with a gyroscope because the Steam Deck has a gyroscope integrated and it really it works really well. However, what's really going on is that games outside Steam don't use the Steam controls. So Handheld Companion, what it does, it's emulating an Xbox controller using your Steam controller. However, gyroscopes don't work on Xbox controllers. So Handheld Companion, what it does, it emulates the right joystick using the gyroscope off 
the Steam Deck and it works really well. You can actually set it to activate when you use the trigger, so only when you're aiming with your gun, that's when the gyroscope activates, kind of like on Steam OS, so it runs really well. However, and again, this is a really buggy experience yet, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Handheld Companion is still in development, it's still getting better, and so you will experience some weird issues every now and then using this app. Just say. But once it works, it works wonders. It works phenomenally well. Fortnite on a handheld. Phenomenal. I wanted to try also Game Pass games. Oh, Hi-Fi Rush. Here we go. So I installed Hi-Fi Rush through the Xbox app using Game Pass and the experience is really good. The installation was smooth, running the game was smooth, configuring the game was smooth. It felt just like playing a normal game on SteamOS. It just felt super smooth. Everything was running the way it was supposed to be running. I could lim limit my FPS by taking it down to 30 hertz with the handheld companion app. Everything was working phenomenal. Phenomenal, great experience. Hi-Fi Rush, 60 FPS on low to medium settings. It, it just runs, it just runs and it works. I love it, phenomenal. So how does it feel to dock the Steam Deck and just play on a TV using Windows. So here's where things get really interesting because everything runs and works perfectly fine. In fact, you have to configure the TV to actually be set as the main display and not to extend the display, but actually to only show on TV. So you have to do some tinkering here and there, but once everything is working, there's one thing that does not work and that is the speakers. So here's the thing, when you dock the Steam Deck to the TV, sometimes it happens that the TV speakers are not detected and the output of the audio comes from the Steam Deck speakers and not from the TV speakers. And to do so, you have to go to the device manager of your Steam Deck on Windows and then find high definition audio drivers, disable them, enable them back again, and then for some reason the TV speakers are being detected and then the audio output comes from there. So that's interesting and very weird, but it happens. Once that is done, once that is fixed, everything works phenomenally well. I can play games, I can use an emulator, in fact I wanted to try Dolphin emulator, just try Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes, just to see if it works, if everything is right there, and it just works. I tried to connect in the, a GameCube controller, just to see if, you know, USBs work on the hub I'm using, or the Steam Deck, and everything is running phenomenally well. So, yes, it works. So, I'm gonna tell you my conclusions. My conclusions are the following. If you're someone who's looking for a console-like experience, don't you even dare install Windows on the deck. Don't you install Windows on the deck. It just, you have to have experience with PC gaming in general in order to install Windows on the deck. Because it's not only installing Windows, it's configuring every single thing to make it run. For example, Halo Infinite, which I wanted to try also with the Steam Deck docked, the only way to make it run at 60 smooth FPS was to actually go to the game files and just lowering down the internal resolution to 65% so it could actually run the game at full 60 FPS. There's a lot of configuring going on, there's a lot of settings, a lot of things that you have to install to make sure that it runs as smooth as possible. However, on SteamOS, everything is just automatic, like it's so easy. Now, here's the thing, if you want to have more freedom per se, of course Windows is a really great experience, but if you're not willing to tinker with so many things, just stick to SteamOS. I know it sucks not to be able to play some games in particular, but it's worth waiting for those games to work, or it's just worth maybe doing a dual boot, maybe? and just having Windows on one side, SteamOS on the other. Um, but yeah, that's just up to you. So I'm still gonna stick around with Windows and just to see how it feels, be a Windows user using the deck, but probably I might go back. I might go back to SteamOS. But let me know your opinion in the comments section down there. I will soon be doing a video of one year with the Steam Deck and tell me, do you have a Steam Deck? Do you have Windows? Do you have SteamOS? You don't have a Steam Deck? Are you planning to get one? How? Why? Let me know. Click the like button and I'll see you in the next video and subscribe. Bye-bye guys. Bye-bye.